An extreme weather pattern will be developing across the United States over the next couple of weeks, and this is going to bring the potential for a record-breaking heat wave. Additionally, significant severe weather will continue to be a possibility over the next seven days, with damaging winds, very large hail, and even tornadoes being a possibility this weekend and into early next week across the Great Plains, the Midwest, and back into the Ohio Valley. So in today's forecast, we are going to talk about everything that you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we've had some big storms over the last 24 hours, including a lot of storms that happened last night back over in Kansas, Missouri, back into Illinois. These brought heavy rainfall, damaging winds, even some hail last night, in addition to some flooding. And then back over near the Gulf Coast, this is Invest 93L, which has been very close to becoming a tropical system. The problem is it just hasn't had enough time over water. So it still appears very unlikely that this will become anything tropical. However, it will dump a lot of rain in Louisiana. Louisiana today, which could lead to excessive flooding. So definitely something to keep an eye on. There is currently a moderate risk of excessive rainfall in place for areas in southwestern Louisiana, including areas like Lake Charles. And then back over in the northeast, we've had some showers and storms over the last 12 to 24 hours. Nothing really too significant, but some damaging winds and even a little bit of hail fell with those storms, and those are mostly clearing out now. And yesterday, we had a pretty big day of severe weather, especially in the Midwest, where we had over 150 wind reports and six tornado reports, which five of those were in Wisconsin. We went live yesterday and it was a pretty crazy afternoon. We had a bunch of tornado warnings there in southern Wisconsin. Overall, we ended up seeing a few tornadoes on the live stream and on top of that, there were a couple that did damage a bunch of buildings. So definitely something to keep in mind here is that we are not out of tornado season by any means, especially in the Midwest. This is really the time frame where we definitely see a more elevated risk of severe weather and unfortunately, I think as we go into early next week, we are going to see more rounds of significant severe weather in the Midwest. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States for the rest of July and to look at that we are going to look at our jet stream right now our jet stream is fairly zonal across the board we really do not have anything organized when it comes to low pressure systems however we do have a large upper level high pressure system that is back over in the southern tier of the United States what really gets interesting though is as we go into this weekend and early next week we are going to continue to see storm systems ejecting here over the northwest and also the northern plains which should bring some severe weather to the northern plains midwest and central plains throughout the next really five to six days but something that really gets interesting by middle of next week is that we are going to have a huge high pressure system developing back over in the southern plains this will become technically a death ridge if not at least a ring of fire which means all of our storm systems are basically going to be circling around this now we can definitely still see severe weather even underneath this upper level ridge the thing is we are going to see some really hot weather and even some record breaking heat as we go into the middle and end here of july so this is definitely a weather pattern that is going to be pretty extreme stream because this high pressure system is literally going to last for upwards of seven to ten days across the southern plains and it might even last longer than that look at what happens by the way as we go into early august we might even see our jet stream go come out of the northwest which would actually promote big lines of thunderstorms back over in the northern plains midwest and the ohio valley but this will essentially kick off likely a slew of lines of thunderstorms across the midwest as we go into early august assuming that this weather pattern does hold in terms of the forecast the one thing we just alluded to is that there is going to be some pretty extreme heat as we go into next week at least for the time being below average temperatures will continue across the northeast northern plains midwest and then slightly above average temperatures underneath our upper level ridge here for the remainder of this week and the weekend by early next week look how the heat starts to build here across the great plains by monday this won't even be the worst of it though tuesday and wednesday look to be very hot across much of the country especially in the central and southern plains right along the mississippi river valley as well and then back over to the ohio valley we are expecting very warm weather to come in here as we go into the last week of July and it's just going to continue more than likely all the way through the end of July perhaps even into early August so get ready for some really warm weather and if the jet stream does end up lifting further to the north and we get that northwesterly flow in early August we can almost undoubtedly expect very warm weather in the Great Plains and then anywhere near or just west of the Rockies so definitely look out for that but again this is a very long-term forecast and there definitely could be some changes to the forecast but at least over the next 10 days we are talking about some really hot weather especially in the Great Plains the Ohio Valley and back through the Mississippi River Valley. And these are the high temperatures that are forecasted day by day. This is beginning with Friday high temperatures in the mid to upper 90s across the central and southern plains. We'll get into the 100s by Sunday back over in Kansas, maybe even some spots near 110 degrees. This warm weather is going to really spike by Tuesday and Wednesday. Areas back over in Nebraska could be into the low 110s back over near Omaha and also back near Kearney, Nebraska. By Thursday, that warm weather is really going to continue across the central and 
and Southern Plains, and there could even be some areas back over near like St. Louis, for example, that could get close to 105 degrees by the end of next work week. And this warm weather will likely continue through the very end of August, especially in the Southern Plains. I mean, areas like Texas, we could easily have a long stretch here of 100s. And it's been so wet down there here over the last few weeks that we really haven't had much of a summer in Texas for the most part so far. But it's definitely coming. Get ready for some extreme heat back over in the Central and Southern Plains. And then some areas like the Midwest could also see extreme heat out of this particular weather pattern. These are also the feel like temperatures that we could be seeing as early as Wednesday of next week. We could have areas in the 110s back over in Illinois, even into Kansas. And the reason why I point out the feel like temperatures is that this can cause, you know, heat stroke. This can definitely cause heat exhaustion. So if you have any outdoor plans, keep in mind that the moisture and the temperature combined can make it feel way warmer than it actually is with your thermostat. So keep that in mind. Again, we really could have some big problems here on Wednesday and Thursday of next week with how warm it is going to feel along the Mississippi River Valley as well. Most areas will likely be in the 100s, maybe even some 110s as far north as Chicago, Indiana, and also back into the Deep South. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Thursday, and we have a long marginal threat of severe weather from northern New England all the way back into Utah and Colorado, and then a slight risk back over in northern New England, where there will be a heightened tornado risk today. And then back over in the northern plains, a low-end threat there for damaging winds and a little bit of hail. But generally speaking, we are going to be seeing widespread storms here across this entire marginal threat of severe weather. And though most of them will not be severe, there will be a potential for downburst winds, large hail, and even some frequent lightning. And I do want to point out that yesterday we had, unfortunately, 14 different injuries over in Jackson, New Jersey at an archery range due to lightning and including one fatality. So please make sure if you hear thunder, make sure that you're going indoors. This is the damaging wind threat for today. That's going to be the main concern across the board. Large hail is a threat if you're back over in Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. There's also a low-end chance for a tornado or two back over in northern parts of New England. That is mainly for northern Maine. Wouldn't even be surprised if they added a small 5% tornado risk to encompass very far northern Maine today, as that'll be basically the remnants from our storm system that we had yesterday back over in the Midwest. And then on Friday, the risk of severe weather will continue across the central plains and even back over to the mid-Atlantic. I actually have a bit of concern, though, for Friday back over here in southwest Minnesota, South Dakota, and also northwest Iowa. I do think there is going to be a more elevated tornado risk here tomorrow afternoon and evening, and even some big hail is going to be a possibility. So definitely stay weather aware in this area. The probabilities, in my opinion, are a bit low right now, but I think as confidence grows, we will likely see these probabilities increase, and there may even be a chance of a live stream tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. On Saturday, we have another large marginal threat of severe weather from Montana back into the Ohio Valley. That does include Illinois and Indiana. This is also another day that I do have some concern, especially back over in the Midwest for at least a heightened risk of large hail, damaging winds, and perhaps even a couple of tornadoes. I think the same thing is going to be in play back over here, back over in South Dakota and Nebraska as well, where we're going to have a low pressure system starting to make its way into this area, which may elevate the vorticity and also wind shear, which could lead to a slightly higher tornado risk as well. Now let's go day by day with the timing of severe weather beginning with today back over in the northeast. We'll be watching for a few storms producing damaging winds and a couple of tornadoes this afternoon, mainly from upstate New York back into northern Vermont. This pictured here is five o'clock by six to seven o'clock. The more elevated tornado threat will exist in northern Maine. So be ready for an isolated tornado or two then. And then after sunset, most of these storms will be moving into Quebec and kind of falling apart across the board. And then on Friday, not really expecting much severe weather, but isolated damaging winds are a possibility back over in Maryland, maybe a very low end, but non-zero tornado risk during the afternoon. They'll be moving across northern Virginia as well. Localized flooding is also a possibility. Across the Ohio Valley today, we're expecting scattered to numerous storms, mainly across the Ohio Valley, including Kentucky, southern Ohio, and southern Indiana, with damaging winds, a little bit of hail, maybe a brief tornado being a possibility somewhere. But again, it's going to be very random, very sporadic, not really expecting anything long term to actually develop out of this. And then on Friday, we're expecting some more storms here across the Ohio Valley, but a little bit further down to the south, not nearly as widespread. These will be pop popping up, producing some isolated winds, and then also some frequent lightning is going to be a possibility. So again, if you have any outdoor plans, definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware. And if you hear any thunder, make sure that you go indoors. Cannot stress that enough. Back over in the Northern Plains on Friday, we're expecting some big hailstorms to try to form west of Minneapolis during the afternoon, perhaps even a line of thunderstorms developing during the evening hours, which could produce significant damaging winds, some hail, and even the potential for a few tornadoes. So definitely be ready for that back over in Southern Minnesota during the late afternoon and early evening. We could literally see a full-blown mesoscale convective system develop here across Minnesota and Iowa, which this could be 
a stream day if this actually were to form. If we see a full-blown line of thunderstorms, we'll almost undoubtedly be live because there would even be a potential for maybe a significant mesoscale convective system. I'm not saying there'll be a derecho in this case, but definitely something we need to monitor very closely here because this would be impacting pretty populated areas in both Minnesota, Iowa, back into Wisconsin, might even arrive to Chicago during the overnight hours. There's also another scenario that could unfold where it's actually uh, a little bit of a cluster that forms over in southern Minnesota, and then we get a few discrete cells back over in southeastern South Dakota. Both scenarios could also play out as well, but this environment is going to be more locally favorable for a few tornadoes, so we definitely need to watch that during the late afternoon and early evening on Friday. And then back over the Midwest, late Friday into Saturday, if that line of storms does form, the remnants of that line would eventually push into Illinois and even going towards St. Louis during the morning. Damaging winds and a low tornado risk would continue during the afternoon, even going into the Ohio Valley. So I'll have to keep an eye on that if you're back over near Columbus, maybe even over near the Cleveland area during the afternoon and early evening hours. That would eventually move towards areas like Maryland and Pennsylvania. So keep an eye to the skies and also there, keep an eye to this YouTube channel because we may go live tomorrow, perhaps even Saturday for severe weather coverage. So definitely stay tuned. It looks like it is going to stay active in those areas. And then back over in the Northern Plains on Saturday, we are expecting a few storms to fire off in Wyoming, Montana, and even back over in Colorado, where there will be a localized environment here favorable for some large hail and even an isolated tornado or two during the late afternoon and early evening hours. I do think on Sunday, we are going to have a more localized environment where we could see a slightly more elevated tornado risk, mainly in South Dakota and Nebraska. So that is also something we're keeping an eye on. And then by early next week, the severe weather will not stop there. In fact, as we go into Sunday into Monday, we are expecting more storms to fire off here across the northern and central plains and the Midwest, likely seeing at least a few rounds of severe storms with lines of thunderstorms becoming more of a frequent concern as we go into the early to mid portion of next week, mainly in the northern plains in the Midwest. So that'll be an area that we need to really keep an eye on as there will also be a lot of instability and quite a bit of wind shear in some localized environments that could elevate the tornado risk just a little bit. And then by the very tail end of next week and into the weekend, we are expecting that active weather pattern to continue in the Midwest and back into the Ohio Valley. And then eventually by the very beginning of August, we really don't know what's going to happen then. But we do think that the ridge that was going to be in the upper levels, as we alluded to earlier in the forecast, will retreat back off to the west, which would eventually favor a more potent environment for severe weather for those in the Midwest, Ohio Valley and the Northeast, assuming that we get our northwesterly flow in place, which usually tends to favor lines of thunderstorms. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. We may not have a video tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see how the severe weather plays out. But keep in mind, there is a chance of a live stream both tomorrow and Saturday. So click the bell icon so you're notified if and when we do go live. And we will see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.